Aliko Dangote, Arsenal takeover. Welcome back to your boys channel. Welcome back to some Arsenal news today. As we will discuss Aliko Dangote's potential Arsenal takeover, as well as that we shall get up there on Summer's Party and the latest Arsenal team news going in to the Benfica game tomorrow. So let's discuss in today's video. Yo, what is going on guys, my name is Bows14 and welcome back to your boys channel. Quickly before we get into the video, make sure to go down there and show your boys some support and smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new and as always let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But with that being said, here we go and here is the latest Arsenal news today, let's go. The first thing that we need to discuss is Aluko Dangote's Arsenal takeover. Right to then, take over from Arsenal, are Arsenal about to get new owners, let's discuss. In terms of Aliko Dangote, he is a Nigerian billionaire and he's actually the richest man in Africa and according to Forbes, he's worth a net worth of 10 billion pounds. I mean listen, when I say you can you put the money on the table, this guy can put a lot of money on the table. And so there has been a report coming up from Football London UK, an article as well, and they have said that Likos Dangote's comments suggest a takeover attempt at Arsenal could be launched this year. 2021 Arsenal takeover, raw! And they have said in January 2020, Dangote stated that he could look to launch a takeover bid when the construction of his refinery in Lagos was completed. The project is due to finish in early 2021, which suggests a push for a change in ownership at Arsenal could be on the horizon. Well, 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 I did not expect this one bit, but I am still very skeptical. But they have said, according to the Africa report, the refinery is set to be operational in early 2021, meaning that Gote could start talks with Kroenke over a takeover in North London. The timeline of early 2021 would suggest the project will be completed at least before the end of June, and Arsenal fans will be interested to see if Dangote keeps to his word, and that will he make a move for the Gunners then. So all they're really doing is they're going off the words Dangote said himself from his own mouth, which is an interview he says he wants to buy Arsenal in 2021. He's going to make a move for Arsenal in 2021. And while that does confirm his interest in the club, it does not confirm that he's actually going to buy the club this year. And as I said, I am very skeptical of all these reports. So I'm trying to be positive at the same time. It is what it is. But if the reports of the refinery being finished and close to completion being true, then I guess what? Maybe, just maybe, this is meant to be. But yes, while Dan Goethe would love to buy Arsenal, like he stated many times in many years in the past, would Stan Kroenke be willing to sell Arsenal. Well, I'll tell you what, with the current financial state we're in, the whole COVID thing and the money that Stan would have lost with Arsenal fans not going to games and money lost by, you know, fan revenue, this may be Dangote's best chance of actually probably buying Arsenal. Because maybe, just maybe, with the whole financial state and them losing out of money, the Kroenke family might just go, listen, Dangote, if you put some money on the table, a decent enough and we might just discuss it. As I said, I'm not here to give you guys some false hope. I've not got no expected date or anything like that. All I'm saying is it's a possibility and we're gonna have to see how things develop and I can see a lot of Arsenal fans have you know almost jokingly said if we were to be bought by Negote we could be the next Man City or the next Chelsea and spending ludicrous amounts of money and while I would love to see that happen at my club I don't know and I'm not gonna make any massive judgments or any statements before anything actually happens but let me know your own thoughts on this entire situation and if Arsenal are to be taken over this year could it change the course of a football club and could we be back in greatness let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on. On to the second thing lads and that is Arsenal versus Benfica team news. And the first player in discussion is my Ghanaian excellence Thomas Partey and what has been said today. Well Mikel Arteta on Thomas Partey today, Thomas is very close, he's got a final test today and if he's feeling good he will be available to play the match. I know there's quite a few if buts and maybe's there but make no mistake I believe Thomas Partey is fit, he's available and he's even a photo here confirming yesterday by Arsenal posting a video showing that Thomas Partey it was included in the full team training he's not no longer training individually and so for me that means he'll be there tomorrow in Greece he'll be available for the game but the matter of fact is is he gonna start but regardless of that question it is a massive boost it is a gargantuan boost for the Arsenal team because our midfield declines massively without him I mean I respect El Nenny but at the same time it's El Nenny it's Thomas Partey and without Thomas Partey in that midfield our ball progression forget the Champions League we're talking the championship standard the ball doesn't go forwards it's 
just sideways FC. And so make no mistake, there are tears in my eyes on the prospect of Thomas Partey starting and even playing tomorrow. No matter what happens, it's a massive boost. And so the question now must be asked, does Arteta just throw him straight into the team in such a massive game or like Kieran Tierney last week, does he bring it on if need must? Now I'm not trying to disrespect Benfica, but the midfielder of Sabayos and Xhaka is more than capable of beating this Benfica team. But then again, do Arsenal need to take any risk in what is our cup final of the season so far? We need to go through, we need to get through the next round of the Europa League and that's what for me Thomas Partey just needs to start. And only then can we potentially have a cheeky, very little and low key Partey. We shall wait and see. But let me know what you would do with Thomas Partey and would you throw him straight into the lineup in the comments below. And apart from Rapolo, we have a fully fit and available squad to select from and that is something that you just love to see in such an important game. But saying that Mikel Arteta has already said he's going to make massive changes from the game on the Sunday and he's confirmed that when he was asked about the team selection for Benfica, I don't know if it will be 5, 4 or 7 changes. We'll have to see how they react from today's performance. Obviously we need a fresh team and we need legs as well because the decision making and everything becomes better when they are fresh. So essentially with Mikel Arteta now having most of his best players available, maybe even all of them, who does he start and who's going to play? Let me give you now my predicted lineup. As I have gone for Bert Leno in goal, Hector Bellerin right back, Luis Gabriel centre backs, Tierney left back, a multiple pivot of Xhaka and Partey, a three in front of Smith Rowe, Saka, Pepe and up front returning Alexandre Lacazette. The reason for me going for that lineup lads, and I just want to go back to the basics of what was working for Arsenal in that little undefeated run we had and it was this team essentially, especially the front five or front four, whatever you want to call it, that worked to a T. And as much as Aubameyang has scored goals in the previous Premier League games, in Man City he was ghosting and Benfica missed too many key chances for my liking. But in terms of Lacazette, Lacazette is not replacing Aubameyang, Lacazette replaces Odegaard in terms of staying in that part of the pitch, so that's that there. In terms of the midfield pivot, I know Xhaka has been poor recently, but I also believe playing so many games, but also not playing to a player the caliber of Thomas Partey massively hinges his game. And in terms of the three as well, Saka, Smith, Rowe and Pepe, I know that Odegaard's been doing well recently, but then again, I think Smith Rowe down the middle with Pepe on the left and Saka on the right, it was working to a T, so why change that if it ain't broke? I mean, do I even need to talk about Bukayo Saka? He's my star boy. But Tierney and Partey coming into this team was a massive boost. It gives us balance and presence in midfield. And also in terms of Alexandre Lacazette and Nicolas Pepe, it is time to redeem yourselves. It is redemption season and this is a game that you need to redeem yourselves massively. But that of course is my own personal opinions lads. I'd love to know yours and your predictions and your own predicted lineups in the comments below. What team would you go for? And oh boy oh boy it's tomorrow match. If it's Gargantuan and I'm this close to a nerves breakdown. So let's move on lads. And on to the final thing lads and that is Xhaka speaks up. Xhaka has been a part of the press conference for the Europa League alongside Mikel Arteta and he had some very very interesting words. First things first Xhaka has said the problem is if you lose it is not possible to understand. I wish I could meet the people who write these things to sit with them and look in their eyes and ask them why are they writing these things. Now what he's referring to there is people that have been abusing him not just on his footballing ability forget that it's a lot more to his family and just personal stuff that just doesn't need to be said. And more from Xhaka on the abuse he has said I do not see them as supporters of my club. To support the club they have to be here if we lose we draw or we win. Of course we can criticise and say what we want about football but not about the person not about the family and you know what he's completely right. I obviously understand that if you don't like Xhaka as a player I mean I myself have not been his biggest fan and I've always said maybe he's not good enough to play for Arsenal Football Club but the moment you go to his family his wife or whoever it is just not on and I just don't see you forget Arsenal fan you're just not a football fan and too often have I seen recently from people when they cross the line they just do it too often and they just don't understand the repercussions because they know it's not there right now but I'm not here to say I am perfect either I have said some stupid stuff in the past but I would never go to his family and that is something that you just don't want to see not at my club not at any club and so on that granite you have my full support and hopefully you can do it on the pitch. Xhaka has also been speaking about Nicolas Pepe and he has said that Pepe is very important for us. He looks very good on the left if I'm honest. He made the difference in the last few weeks. He's very fast and can run in behind. Now of course the last game Pepe did start against Man City but he was a right winger and he just struggled and for whatever reason he is just not tactically good enough to play on the right hand side especially in the Premier League. But on the left hand side because he's naturally left footed and he's so left footed he can hold his width and he looks like he provides Arsenal a far better option and so as I've already discussed I put him in my own personal predicted lineups I would love to see him start but as a left winger let 
let Saka do the work on the right hand side and let Pepe do the damage on the left hand side. But then you, Nicolas Pepe, I believe, I trust you. But now don't let me down and do the business tomorrow. Get some goals, get some assists, and let's have some presence block. Xhaka has also been speaking on Mikel Arteta and he has said Mikel is unbelievable how he sees the game. I think I'm a guy who understands his game very quick. He puts me in a position where I have the freedom. This is what I like. I do not like it when I have my back to the opponent's goal. And this is something that whether you like it or not, these two have a good connection, a good relationship from player to manager. And I personally believe Mikel Arteta trusts Xhaka and for whatever reason that is, they both like each other and they both want to work for each other. But I can already see that some fans won't like that and that's understandably so. A lot of people don't rate Xhaka, myself in the past and recently as well. I just don't think he's the level that Arthur needs to progress into the higher levels. But Xhaka today has indicated at least that he sees his long term future at Arsenal and adds, I am not a guy who is scared to play in front of fans. And so there you guys go, Xhaka saying, I am here to say, Sequeller FC. My personal opinion is, I think we can get better. But as I said, I'm an Arsenal fan, I want the best for my club, and I'm here to be proven wrong, Granite. So do your talking on the pitch, put some banging performances in, be consistent with it, and I will love you as an Arsenal player. What is it, Redemption Arc Part 5 for Granite Xhaka? We shall wait and see. Let me know your thoughts on Xhaka. What would you do with him? Sell him or keep him in the comments below. And there you mango, that is the video there and there. Of course, if you have enjoyed, make sure to go down there and smash that like, subscribe to the channel if you are new on the road to 40 game, my guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on all things that I've discussed and follow my social media as well. The links are in the description below. But there you mango, the latest Arsenal news today. And it's a big game tomorrow. It's massive. It's Garkanchuan. We already know it. It's a cup final. And I will see you there. Will they watch long? In a bit.